Draymond's return is looming, which means the Warriors should go back to the 28 and 6 caliber team they were before the DPOI's injury. While the Warriors are just 17 and 16 without Green, they're coming off an outing where they outscored the steaming Denver Nuggets by 20 in the second half, fueled by a three point barrage from the trio of Stephen Curry, Jordan Poole, and Jonathan Kaminga. Deadpool iced the game with back to back three point daggers. Steph hit one of his patented logo bombs, but mostly got whatever he wanted at the rim. That got me envisioning how deadly the Golden State Warriors' crunch time lineup could be at full strength, because the addition of not only Green, but 2020's number two overall pick in James Wiseman, who just went off in the G League, gives Steve Kerr some powerful options. Despite some media and fans panicking, the Golden State Warriors have nothing to worry about, so stay tuned to find out exactly why. Right quick, only 11.5% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Hoops, and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. We'll get to a film room on Stephen Curry's wizardry against Denver, but first for a breakdown on the Warriors' two most important young assets. A third year player who deserves a max contract at some point in Jordan Poole, along with the 19-year-old's rookie sensation in Jonathan Kaminga. Thursday night in the Mile High saw Poole finish with 21 points, 7 dimes, and 5 boards, while being a game high by far plus 29 in Golden State's 113-102 win over the Nuggets. Just chalk up another strong showing in a dominant stretch where Jordan's displayed his best quality, one which seemingly makes his potential even higher than it is. He's built for the most tense, pressure-filled environments, Jordan's unafraid to miss when attempting the big shots, given the very reason he plays the game of basketball is for those types of moments. Poole still got a long way to go with his defense, shooting consistency, and decision making, but Jordan's rare clutchness with a stone cold fourth quarter demeanor makes all those progressing qualities feel tolerable. Steve Kerr spoke on how Poole performed against Denver, saying, I thought this was one of the best games Jordan has played. And he's strung together four or five good ones in a row now. He's really coming into his own. Steve's got a point, as over Poole's last five games, the University of Michigan alum has averaged 23.8 points, five assists, on 61.1% shooting from the field, 59% shooting from three-point range, and 88.9% shooting from the foul line. JP's also been a plus 43 in his last two games. For the Warriors rookie Jonathan Kaminga, it's mesmerizing to see his scoring development as the 2021 seasons progressed. John played 13 games and went through a season playing with grown men in the G League, opting to go that route instead of college, and that's helped him avoid hitting the rookie wall, and instead allowed him to steadily develop over the course of his first year in the pros. The teenager in Kaminga has already become a player who can easily fill up the points column, all while imposing elite impact in several other areas. JK entered the game number four on the Golden State Warriors in points per 36 minutes at 20.2, only trailing Curry, Thompson, and Poole. Kaminga's also second in true shooting percentage on the Warriors, trailing just Gary Payton II. When the 21-22 season kicked off in the first games of his playing career, you'd see Kaminga struggle against bigger teams like Denver, but displaying he's quickly morphed on the court and matured off of it. Jonathan's now significantly more under control with his post operation and overall playing style. In turn, he's become a nightmare of a weapon for teams who can't match his athleticism, flashing his scary development. This time around against one of Golden State's rivals in Denver, the seventh overall pick dropped 18 points in only 22 minutes of play, making seven of his 12 shots and two crucial three pointers. The two-way unlimited potential of Jonathan Kaminga could be broke down in a separate video. Let me know if that's something you want to see in the comments section. For this next segment, thanks to Joe V-Ray of SB Nation for his input. Go follow him on Twitter at Joe V-Ray NBA. Since overcoming Ray Allen on December 14th to become the NBA's undisputed three-point king, Curry's numbers have decreased across the board, averaging 24.8 points on 43.5% shooting from the field, but most notably, 35.6% shooting from beyond the arc. The league average from distance is 35%, and we're not accustomed to seeing the greatest shooter of all time be anything close to that mark. With that said, after breaking the record, Curry's more or less kept up his high volume of around 11 threes per night. Most of that's simply been because of a shooting slump that's bound to happen to any human being, 
even the best long range sniper in the sport's history. But most unusual is how long the slump has lasted and that it doesn't feel like it's based on anything physical. Steph's still gaining separation and breaking down defenders. He's not the spring chicken that he was half a decade ago, but he still hasn't shown signs of significant decline. Regardless, Curry's still top of the league dangerous. Just consider how defenses are still guarding him like he can go off at any moment. Doubles and traps around ball screens, copious amounts of top locking, and overplays on off-ball screens, and basic pick and roll coverages that don't involve dropping back. Opponents throw any defensive game plan at Curry to get the rock out of his palm. If they don't, or don't get the opportunity to, he'll hit his defender with one elusive crossover and pull up directly in their grill like he does to Bryn Forbes right here. That shot capped off a 37-24 run in the third quarter for the Warriors in their win against the Denver Nuggets, a span in which Curry scored 18 of his 34 points on the game. The Warriors had a 124.7 offensive rating in Curry's 38 minutes against the Nuggets. Without him, they had a paltry 81 offensive rating, meaning the Warriors with Curry on the floor were the best offense in the league. Without him, they were 21 points per 100 possessions worse than the worst offense in the NBA. That's pretty insane. When Curry goes on one of his patented scoring binges, the attention he always garners from defenses reaches new levels. When defenses are desperately throwing everything at him, that's when Curry gets his teammates involved. Against Denver, it was intriguing to see that when Stefan's jumper wasn't falling, he took it all the way to the rim with his speed and underrated finishing, which allowed his natural rhythm to establish itself. A great example of that comes right here, where the play starts off with a zipper screen for Curry, followed by a wing entry to Andrew Wiggins and a side pick and roll with Nemanja Bialica. After setting the screen, Bialica doesn't roll, but instead sets a veer screen for Curry. Keep your eye on Nikola Jokic throughout this possession. He drifts away from Bialica to softly double Wiggins in the corner. When Bialica sets the veer screen, Jokic realizes he needs to recover quickly towards Curry, but Jokic allows his right foot to lead towards his closeout. Curry attacks his lead foot, and the wizardry is on full display. Steph draws contact while managing to get the ball off glass for a lay-in. When the time called for Curry to be aggressive, he more than answered the call. There's an element of truth to having the perfect balance between running the team-wide system and deferring to your main man. The Warriors managing to find that balance will often allow their offense to reach its peak. Curry's a defensive magnet unlike any other player we've seen in the history of our game. Have him hunt for his own shots, especially against defenders who are there to be hunted, and the chef's going to cook. Right here, Steph Curry relentlessly attacks DeMarcus Cousins in the pick and roll on back-to-back -back possessions. Respect to Steph for the tough shot making, but more impressively is his IQ to scope out the Nuggets' weakest link. Ultimately, that made the buckets possible. His 24-second half consisted of fearless drives, catch-and-shoot threes, and trademark pull-up shooting. When it was obvious that Curry was in a zone, Denver did try to get the ball out of his hands, but given everyone else did their jobs, that didn't work. When Steph and the rest of his dub teammates are collectively flowing on both ends of the court, without the proper scheming, there's little to nothing any team can do about it. That's why the team's best assist guy and defender in Draymond Green returning, another bulky screen setter and rebounder in James Wiseman to back up Kevon Looney, should make Warrior fans optimistic despite their team experiencing some turbulence recently. Who are you most looking forward to see return for Golden State? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top five commenters with the most shout outs by March 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Irvin Alexar Guerra, who says for me, Zaire Williams can develop into a more athletic Tobias Harris. Harris, under Doc Rivers with the Clippers, averaged around 20 points per game at 52, 43, and 87 shooting splits as he almost became an all-star in the 2019 season with above-average defense at his frame. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.